up players to be excited about. Okay, players that we think this season can still hold their heads high. I think we're both going to say the same 19-year-old who's incredibly versatile. Um, so I'm going to start with Saka because yeah. I am so excited about this guy. I'm so excited yeah. about him. Um, yeah. I've, never seen someone, I've never seen someone this versatile and look so accomplished in every position at 19. It's mad. Yeah, it is mad. And um, what's uh, weird about Saka is that you you watch him play football and he doesn't look particularly fast. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look particularly strong, but people can't take the ball off him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that goal yeah. against uh, Southampton, he, he he really knows where to put his body yeah, yeah. Uh, in to protect the ball. I mean, it was such a good run, such a good give and go. And uh, yeah, he's great. He, he looks like he loves the club as well, which is a mm-hmm. fantastic yeah, thing. Yeah. I think that he'll stay for a long time. I, I don't think that he'll go anywhere. I think he'll be an Arsenal player. Yeah. Him and Tierney, I can see really, you know, oh. staying a long time and, yes. and that, that that sounds great. Um, yeah, really excited about Saka. I think he's a great player. I mean, the fact that he's playing as many games as he is this mm. season, I think he's played more than anyone else and yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha- still hasn't dropped in form is testament to, to how yeah. good he is. I think Martinelli would give us a real... Sorry, just to... to jump no, 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 go. Player. Yeah, next player. I think it, Martinelli yeah. would give us a real jump um, mm. in the terms of, like I was saying about Pepe, Martinelli is direct. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, like a, he's like a little terrier. He yeah, will yeah. not stop, you know, head down and running at players. And uh, that can be quite frustrating at times, but it's exactly what we need at the mm. moment. He scores goals, he gets into positions, he makes runs. And again, we're putting so much pressure on another youngster, but... <laughs> I that, do think he'll just add that bit of fight and add that bit of venom, which will just mm-hmm. be infectious that we don't have at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah that, I'm, I'm excited does, about him. That does worry me, the pressure we're putting on him, but his energy kind of reminds me of a Tevez kind of guy. Just yeah, hassling, little Sanchez. Hassling, hassling. Same, and, same kind of thing, yeah. yeah. And some of the goals he scored have been unbelievable. Um, the other player, I think, I'm just excited about the young players. I like Balogun. I hope mm-hmm. Smith Rowe gets a chance. I like Willock. Fans jump on him so quickly, but I like Willock. Um, yeah, Willock yeah. reminds me of Lampard. Um, I okay. don't think he's as good as Lampard <laughs> yet. I mean, that's a huge shout. I'm not <laughs> saying that he's as. He, I don't even think he'll be as good as Lampard. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. But in the terms of a deep midfielder that likes to make late runs into the box and get an assist and goals, I mean, if I was Arteta, I'd be putting on videos of Frank Lampard yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That, and saying, "Watch this guy." watch what he does like you can this is the player that you should try and model yourself around I know everyone's different and I know he'll have different styles but yeah I think Willock is uh is, is one for excited again below gun uh Balogun sorry looks really good yeah. uh him coming on in the Europa and looks like he's going to sign a contract which is great fingers for the crossed. club fingers crossed um, yeah I'm going to say something about one particular youngster well. that I'm not a big fan of and that is Eddie Nketiah and I'm sorry, I'm not sure what I know, you think I about love that. Eddie. And I love him and Ian Wright. They're like best mates, but I just don't think he's quite good enough, unfortunately. He, yeah, he's yeah. tenacious. He gets into areas. He's a poacher. But I'm sorry, anywhere other than outside the box. And he's actually not a very good footballer. Yeah, yeah, he he, yeah. he can't hold up the ball. He doesn't really look like he'd ever be able to create anything or find a pass. Is he, is he better than Lacazette? I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'd give him like, the, the nod at over Lacazette at the moment yeah. um, because he's tenacious and young and he, he's got something to prove. But to be honest, given the clips, I know it'd be a lot of pressure to put on him. I'd yeah. rather Balogun start on either yeah. of them at the moment. Yeah. Um, That's fair. So, uh, yeah, less excited about him, I have to say. But Emil Smith Rowe looks great. Will it look great? As I said, as we said, Tierney, Saka, Martinelli. There's definitely a bright future there. Yeah. We just need the right players around them, and uh, uh, and I know it's a massive thing, and I know we're we're running uh, running over. Um, but <laughs> Marci- uh, but also, I'd love to see Ozil back in the team, man. I'm not we sure need what him now. Him. He is watching his stock go up week by week I mean, by week. I, now we need to address this quickly, and it's going to have to be quickly because we've gone well over. But yeah, yeah. The Ozil situation, I think, links right back to the board, right? There is no way that that is for footballing reasons that he's, he's being left out, right? Arteta no. has been told to leave him out of the squad. He yeah. That has to be what's happening. And yeah. if that is the case, I don't like where this club is going or has gone in the fact that a player speaking up for human rights has potentially made him outcast from the squad. No, definitely. And the thing is, is that I've also read somewhere that... Um, 
in his contract, his 350k a week, I'm not sure if this is true, that if he's not in the playing squad, it's then 250k a week. Oh. So apparently 100k of his contract is for him being in the squad. It's like a bonus. So they're kind of saving themselves 100k. I'm not sure if that's correct, but yeah. I have read it. Um, it either way, it, I think that um, if it was down to Arteta, he would have ple- kept him in the PL squad. Mm-hmm. And then if he still didn't want to play him, not put him in match day squad to save that 100k yeah. if it was about that. Yeah. I think yeah, that he yeah. would be in the squad and then you could call him up now. There's no doubt about it. He's been told that Urza was not allowed to play for Arsenal and yeah. whether or not the, man, the the owners have a change of heart in January because of how badly we're doing and we move a couple of players on, i.e. Socrates and Mustafi, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. and Jaka, and then bring him back in. I mean, he's just, it's so frustrating because he's exactly what we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he might not put the work rate in and that is annoying. But we need someone in the middle that can find those passes. It's just exactly what we need. Or I don't know, man. But yeah, I, I I've always loved her, so I can't help it. He's just a little magician in my eyes. So. No, I just I, I always go back to the day that we signed him, and it was one of the most exciting transfer days of my life. And I was I, yeah, I can't believe over it. the moon when we signed him. We were signing one of the top ten players in the world at his peak, and it's horrific to see it end like this. But Jack, we're gonna have to end it there. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, quickly <laughs> so put you on the spot. So much to vent about. I'm going to quickly put you on the spot and say, where do you think we finish this season? I'm going to go optimistic. I'm going to say I'm going to go eighth. I uh, know that is optimistic at the moment, but I think okay. that if we get a good run of games in, we can finish eighth, maybe. maybe, maybe, maybe. I will, at this point, take anything that isn't relegation. I will How sad is that, relegation. by the way, that I've said a sentence, optimistically, I think we'll finish eighth. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Life moves um, like you're pretty fast. So... Jack, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I feel no I feel like I've got a few things off my chest. That was cathartic. Therapy. Tommy, oh, what do you think? I wanted to thank you guys because while you were talking, I, I was pretty silent, but I was actually learning more about Arsenal, all the players you were talking about. I was checking when they transferred to Arsenal and so on. And um, yeah, it was definitely very interesting. Yeah, I agree with Jack. The final sentence, optimistically, I think we're going to end eighth. Says a lot about the club <laughs> at the moment. But hey, Jack, thank you a lot for coming on. Um, what are we going to have for dinner? I feel like in London, yeah. you're going to have something different to that usual <laughs> Guys, pasta. I think I'm going to chuck a quick pizza in the oven. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> won't, won't be as good as the, won't be as good as the pizzas you've got there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, I was uh, more I expecting know. like some, some good Indian food or something like that oh, yeah, <laughs> here maybe, in London. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Though, yeah, it's been been awesome. So, yeah, anytime. Beautiful. It is now time, Tommy. You need to finish the quiz with me, right? Yeah, it's time for the time lineup, Jack. Yeah, th- this was a this was a good time lineup. You will listen to the episode, and you'll have a chance to guess the correct timeline as well. Thank you again, Jack, and let's jump to Cheers, our guys. time lineup answer. And here we are back to our time lineup after, I don't know how you would describe that conversation, Rory. Are you feeling better or worse about Arsenal after that? I think it was cathartic slash depressing. Mm. Uh, (laughs) It's not a quick fix. There's no quick fix to the current problem. But I think maybe it's starting to be fixed. Fingers crossed. Anyway. Can can you fix your scores in time lineup? That's We're about to find out. I'm coming for you, Tommy. All right, listeners, our four events are in no particular chronological order because that's what you are asked to do. (laughs) Manchester United winning their second ever Champions League. Clarence Sedorf winning his first Champions League. Zinedine Zidane signing for Juventus. And Roberto Baggio, il divin codino, signing for Juventus. Rory. Please, tell us, what are you thinking? So, I'm thinking, number one, the earliest one is Baggio signing for Juventus. The second one is Seydorf winning the Champions League with Ajax. The third one is Zidane signing for Juventus. And the final one is United winning their second Champions League. I think... 
I don't think I've done well here. Even though at the beginning I said, oh, I think I know it. I'm looking at your face. I think I might have absolutely shagged it. But let's find out. I don't know. So budget signing for Juventus, could you, could you put a date to it? I'm going to say like 94, 95. Okay. And what about United winning their second Champions League? Well, I think their second one was 99 because they won under Busby and they've only won three and Ferguson won two of them. So I think that was 99. So let's start from the last event. Unless they won four. Did they win four? I don't know. Anyway. Let's start from the very last event in chronological order, which is correct, Rory. Manchester United winning their second ever Champions League in the 1998-1999 season. Of course, you remember they were playing Bayern München. Bayern Munich, the treble year. Treble year, exactly. Then let's backtrack to the previous event in... 1996, a very talented Frenchman signs for Juventus. I literally got 96 written on my page as well. I'm so happy about that. So Rory's big doubt during our pause was, did Zidane win the World Cup while he was at Juventus? Yes, he did. He won the World Cup in 1998 and he was at Juventus from 1996 to 2001 before moving to Real Madrid. So that was correct. Now, Baggio signing yeah. for Juve or Sedorf winning his first now, Champions League? I think Ajax won it in... I think No, I said 95 for Baggio, but I think Ajax won it in 93, so I think I might have got them the wrong way around. But... You didn't, man. Oh! You scored the four out of four. Yes! Well, because Clarence Sedorf won his first Champions League with Ajax in the 1994-1995 season. One this is one. Out. That's not bad, that. This is one of my favorite stats of all time. Never forget that he also won a Champions League with Real Madrid and he won two with AC Milan. And Crazy. Inter sold him for some yeah, reason. I and Inter no sold him. Yeah. And Baggio signing for Juve, very interesting, way earlier than both of us would have guessed, 1990. Really? 1990, wow. the very controversial move from Fiorentina to Juventus, which made Fiorentina fans literally lose it and really had... It was a big dent in the relationship between yeah, Fiorentina like, well, and still, the they Juventus. still haven't forgiven him for it, eh? So. Well, I think that Fiorentina, the Fiorentina fan base are the ones that hate Juventus the most, which is a very tight competition in Italy because everybody <laughs> yeah. is Juventus. But yeah, Rory, hey! Yeah, Rory, well happy four with that. out of four. Well happy with that. I, it, look, I just wanted to prove you that it could be hard without being impossible, right. but maybe it was a bit too easy, this one. Well, it's easy to say that now. I've got them all right. It's easy when you know it. But now it's time for the lineup. Let's so do it. there are actually two games that you could pick: either right. Sedorf's Champions League winning game, which is not that hard to guess because that IX team yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. stacked with players, or then you have Manchester United Bayern Munich Champions League final in 1999. It's a close one. I think I can do most of the United team, so I'm going to go for United Champions League. All right. Rory, regroup your thoughts. I am listening to you. So you have 11 chances, right? In goal, Mm -hmm. Peter Schmeichel. You got one point. Gary Neville. You got two points. Now, at the back, it would have been Yapstam. Yep. Too early for Yapstam. Okay. And okay, I'm going to go for the ones I know. Paul Scholes. You. Nope. No, no Paul Scholes in the starting lineup. Who he was suspended for? I can't remember. I know Keane was suspended. Okay. Giggs. Yup. You got four with Beckham. five takes. Beckham. You got Solskjaer. five. Solskjaer he came on because he scored the winner didn't start yes of course he came on so we're going to count that he scored the winner he counts right yeah yeah yeah. he counts counts. so you're at six with seven guesses David May David May Mm, nope you're at six with eight takes he got a winner's medal I'm sure it was him that got a winner's medal was it not David May so that's two wrong now isn't it I got one more wrong guess 
Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you had eight guesses and six Sheringham. correct answers. Sorry, say that again. Sheringham. Yes, he came on. So 